As most of you already know, Canon dropped the R6 and R5, and boy, Canon have really outdone themselves this time. The R6 is pretty much the exact camera I have been looking for, and the R5, well, this is an absolute first for Canon. How is this even possible? How are they even dealing with the heating issues? With such a small body, you would find this really difficult. Like how, how long can it record the 8K and 4K124? It's just as I was expecting. Now the R6 literally has all the specs I'm after in a camera body on paper at the moment, but let's run through some of the specs on this camera. But I would also like to thank each and every one of you guys who have subscribed to my channel at this point in time. You have uh, helped me surpass that 20K subs and you know I am super, super grateful for that, uh, for you guys tuning into my videos. And um, yeah, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be up to 20K. And I absolutely appreciate every one of you that have hit that subscribe button. Uh, but if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. That would be absolutely amazing. I do a whole bunch of filmmaking, tutorials, tips, tricks, uh, and photography as well. But anyway, let's get back into the R6. So the R6 has a full frame 20.1 megapixel sensor, which is capable of recording up to 4K at 60 frames per second at 10 bit 422. It is Canon's first five axis in body stabilization paired with their lens uh, image stabilization and Canon are claiming eight stops of image stabilization, which is astounding. Now the R6 also has a three inch fully articulating screen. It has a 3.69 million dot EVF dual UHS-2 SD card slots, 12 frames per second in mechanical shutter and 20 in electronic shutter. That's for stills. Now this, that's incredible. Now it has the new dual pixel autofocus as well, which includes, I think, animal eye autofocus and human eye autofocus and uh, all body tracking or whatever it's got. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's amazing. And this is all in a body that weighs 680 grams. Now that is one impressive list of specs, but let, let's talk about the video anyway. It's not 100% full frame when it comes to 4K recording. There is that very, very, very small 1.05 times crop, which is pretty much nothing at all. You don't really have to worry about that. You know, it's pretty much from this to this. So you're not actually making much of a difference, uh, but there is that a very small crop. Hey, if I owned it, I wouldn't really care about that anyway. At least it's not like your 1.5 times crop, which is quite significant. Now the bitrate isn't as much as I was expecting. It's only 120 megabits per second in 120p at 8 bit and 10 bit is 180 megabits per second. Uh, but once again, no audio from that high frame rate here, which, you know, does kind of suck a little bit. Now the uh, bit rate for 4K 60 is 230 megabits per second in 8 bits 420 and 340 megabits per second and 10 bit 422. Now, unfortunately at this point in time, there is no raw that's confirmed, but I would imagine Canon would add this in the firmware update in the future, which you would probably be able to do raw external or maybe raw internal because the R5 does raw internal. We're not sure at the moment, uh, but I would imagine they would be adding that just like what uh, Nikon with, did with the Z6 and Z7. Now, unfortunately, the R6 only has that micro HDMI output, which I guess they're just trying to save a little bit of space there. I don't know if that's a pro or con for some of you guys. Some of you guys, it's a bit of a deal breaker. But uh, what do you guys think of the specs? You know, is this thing a beast on paper? Do you think there are any other pros and cons that you see so far? Now, they haven't tested the rolling shutter, but you know, word has it, it isn't that great. Uh, but I think Gordon Lang said he wasn't actually allowed to say anything about the rolling shutter, which is pretty concerning, but um, we'll soon find out when some people actually get the, the actual camera itself. Now, overheating. Let's let's uh, address that elephant in the room. Overheating issue, like I said, was going to be, it, it was gonna happen because there is this many specs in such a small body with, you know, absolutely no heat dissipation in the body. There's, it's not like the Panasonic S1 where it has your active fan, which is cooling the whole system down. Uh, there's not even a passive cooling system where there's a whole bunch of vents. So you could definitely imagine on a hot day, this thing is gonna be overheating uh, quite a lot. And as Peter McKinnon actually shown, the R5 was 
really not great with these overheating issues. Now, Sony was absolutely criticized and bashed dramatically for the overheating issues with uh, pretty much their APS-C cameras, and it's absolutely killed them for a while. And uh, you would imagine that, you know, so Canon would have learnt from this. And, uh, but I don't know, will they fix this before the final release of the R5? Uh, is the R6 as it, it seems? You know, Canon has actually released a whole bunch of paperwork in their, um, in their manuals to show how much time you can actually record and with it, you know, overheating. And then you've got to wait a certain period of time, depending on which frame weights you're at. You know, some of them you have to wait like 10 minutes to cool down to give you, I think it was an 8K raw, 10 minutes to cool down to give you an extra three minutes of recording. That's, um, that does suck, but you know, who's gonna be recording 8K, right? <laughs> there's, there's not many people will, but yes, there are a lot of professionals that are actually looking forward to the 8K because I mean, imagine 8K in weddings, imagine 8K in interviews, the power of cropping in is going to be phenomenal. You could, you know, pretty much have a whole bunch of lens selections just with shooting with one lens. Um, there's just so many applications for professionals out there with 8K. But anyway, back to the R6. You know, the R6, like I said, is pretty much everything I have been looking for in a camera body at the moment, you know, for the type of work that I do. Uh, providing obviously the image quality and smooth dynamic range is top notch. You know, Sony, what are they going to do with the A7S III? Do I have to switch to get the specs I need? You know, I really don't want to, uh, but if you are a Canon user, the R6 most definitely would be the camera that you should be investing in. In my opinion, this is a much better deal than the R5, uh, unless you really, really desperately need 8K or 4K 120. You know, 4K 60 definitely is enough for a lot of people. 120 sometimes is a little bit overkill. You know, I would absolutely love to shoot uh, 4K 120 rather than 1080 120. I think the EOS R has 720 120. Uh, which kind of sucks. It's a massive, massive upgrade from the EOS R. And uh, for the R6, the price, you know, $24.99 US, that is the best price on the market at this point in time with the current specs. You know, I think the S1 does $24.99. It also has 4K60, but it's got a 1.5 crop. The A7 III only 4K30 with a 1.2 crop. And currently it's, uh, I think, $199 US at the moment. The Z6 is also $199 US with 4K30 full frame readout, but you can actually do raw recording externally as well. And uh, Canon, yeah, it seems to, they seem to have listened to their customers and that is a really, really good sign at this point in time. Uh, this is exactly what Canon users really need. This is what the industry actually really needs. You know, listen to what the people want and create something what they want. This is, this is what we're after. You know, even that little touch bar, uh, they put a joystick in there. A lot of people wanted the joystick. The touch bar was pretty much useless for a lot of people. Um, it's also got a fully articulating screen that's completely, you know, you can touch it. You can go through the settings and adjust it. This is what Sony should be doing as well. It's 2020, come on. We've got smartphones that have been doing this for a very long time. So I'm sure these cameras would be able to do it. Uh, obviously, trying to keep that cost down low, that's what they're trying to do. They don't want to throw in all these specs and throw it out there for 10K US. You know, I can understand that, um, but is there uh, also going back to the R5, you know, it's 38.99 US, you know, is it really worth that 1400 US more than the R6? It really depends if you need that 8K, it really depends if you need the 4K 120. Uh, is there a dynamic range difference between these two sensors? You really, really wanna see this when there are completely objective reviewers get this, I know there are a lot of Canon ambassadors that got these cameras and couldn't say much, or even just high-end people who uh, were able to give just a little bit of a general overview of what the camera was like. They couldn't say much about anything else. They did say a little bit about the overheating, but that's probably as much as they were allowed to say through what uh, is in their contract. But I am extremely confident that new Sony cameras that will be released this year and next year 
will have everything that I need currently anyway, so I probably won't be investing in the R6 at this point in time. I will wait for the A7 uh, S3. Probably not the A7 IV. I don't think there's gonna be a massive upgrade with that. Uh, but the A7S3 would most likely be future-proof. But anyway, what do you guys think? Have you put a pre-order in for the R5 or R6? Is this something you'll be purchasing? They are extremely great cameras. Like, you know, Canon has done really well, and I am over the moon about this. But uh, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. As per usual, give it a thumbs up if you did like this video. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.